Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? <laughs> Look at my hair. It's like <laughs> so crazy. Um, it is, you guys, it is 5.56 a.m. I fell asleep last night at like 10.30 and I woke up like two or three times throughout the night and I was like, I'm gonna get up in five minutes. Oh, I just was so comfortable. I was so comfy. But I just kept on laying there. And um, <laughs> so now, the sun is coming up and I am vlogging for yesterday. <laughs> but it's okay. But I am gonna tell you this, that yesterday I said the vlog was gonna be short and it was like an hour and a half. So I'm literally gonna vlog for like a half an hour tonight. <laughs> Today, this morning, whatever it is. Because I'm tired. <laughs> I wanna go home and go back to bed. Um, so I'm gonna vlog and then I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna go back to bed for a couple hours. And then if it's nice, I might go to the pool today. Oh my gosh. Oh. I went to the pool all day today. I got up and I did a review um, at Starbucks of the Dirty Chai Latte. It was really good. Like, I could drink it on a regular basis. And then, um, I got that and then I went to the pool. And I got to the pool, like, what time did I get there? Oh, shoot, I don't even know what time. 2.30, and I stayed until like 5.30. And then I came home and um, I made a drama video. And then Alex and I, oh, we went to dinner this evening to Brew Burger, which is right over there. There's a couple of them around Indianapolis, but this one over here was just built. We were gonna go to Cheesecake Factory. Well, we went to Cheesecake Factory and when we walked inside, they were like, um, we're not taking any more people for the evening. And it was like early when we went to, it was like, I think it was like seven o'clock. I mean, it wasn't late at all. We're like, you you don't have, they're like, no, we're like booked for the rest of the evening. There were people, there was all kinds of people like sitting outside, like people sitting outside eating, but then there were people sitting outside like waiting too. So, we went to Brew Burger, which I had forgotten. I was like, I don't think I've ever been there. And Alex was like, oh, we went there with this like friend of his that he used to work with. And I was like, oh. I was like, yeah, I remember that place. I said, actually, that's where I went with like my sponsor and Tanya and a bunch of our friends after I spoke when I gave my lead last winter. I was like, let's do that. I said, they have an impossible burger there that's great. And they have this sriracha. It's like a Caesar salad, but it's not like a Caesar. It's like got sriracha dressing instead. And um, it's really good. And Alex was like wanting to eat like some bar food. So we went, he got like these loaded cheese fries. And then um, he got a burger too. So we did that. Oh man. It's so weird when you go to these restaurants because they, they seem so dead, like when you go in, right? Um, and you like wear a mask in. And then, if you wear a mask until they take you to your seat. And then it's like, the closest person next to us was probably 20 feet away. Like the tables are like spaced apart, you know? And so it looks like it's like empty. But then typically at most restaurants, people are waiting. And so that you, like it has the illusion that it's like packed, 
but then you go in and it's like empty. Although Brew Burger wasn't, there was no line whatsoever. And they had seating like inside and outside. Um, so yeah, we did that for dinner and then we came home and then I hadn't seen Tanya in like days. We were actually, we were supposed to go to our meeting tonight. Um, and so that's why like I came home like after the pool and was like trying to get my stuff done so I could go pick up Tanya for the meeting. That was our plan. And I think it was like 6.45. No, it would have had to have been sooner than that. Like 6.15, she texted me and she was like, I can't get out of the kennel in time to go to the meeting tonight. So we didn't end up going to the meeting tonight, last night. Um, so I went and got her for a fountain pop because I hadn't seen her in like days. And so I took her to get a fountain pop. I got a bottle of water. This smart water, this cucumber lime smart water that I've actually reviewed on here or on my review channel. And um, yeah, and then we just drove around and talked for a little bit. good to see her. That was it. And then I came home and Alex was watching this show in bed with the dogs on like the big TV in the bedroom, which he like rarely, we would hardly ever watch TV on that TV. <clears throat> we don't have like cable or anything on that TV because they can't run cable through the house to come up there. So we just have to like watch like Netflix or whatever, which is fine, you know, but Alex is watching this show, I can't remember. Oh, it's called Younger, I think. He loves it, he thinks it's hilarious. Um, it's got a... Um, I said to him, I go, is that, that, is that so-and-so? And he was like, yeah. And I said, who is that again? And she's like a Disney star, or like a singer, or like, I can't remember who it is. But she's in that show. Anyway. He likes that, so he was watching it. Like, when I laid down, he was like, Tucker, should we watch another episode? Um, so, and then I just, like, fell asleep while he was watching that show. And the weirdest thing happened to me at the pool today. So, I was in the pool. And I was talking to these two women at the pool. And, um... They were like asking me like, by the way, my back is still like in so much pain. Okay, Mr. Truck. Like it is really, really hurting. And um, so I called and talked to my dad again about it. And he was like, well, why don't you go see somebody if, like, it's, you, you know, you're that concerned about it. And I was like, he goes, it sounds to me like, you know, he goes, it might be, like, sciatica or something like that. But he was like, here, he goes, you sit and drive in a car so much. He was like, you know, you're sitting in a certain position. And he was like, I'm wondering if that doesn't have a lot to do with it. I don't, like, I don't even think about that kind of stuff. But he was like, how much are you like sitting like in, you know, that same posture? And I was like, well, all day long. Cause I sit like that, you know, when I'm working on the computer, I sit like that when I'm making videos, I sit like that in the car. And he goes, yeah, that might have something to do with it. Um, you know, he was like, have you taken like a day and just not done any of those things to see if it feels better? Like just really not driven around for a long time and I was like, no, and he was like, well, that, he was like, if you didn't do that stuff for like a day, he was like, if, if it felt a little bit better, then you would know that maybe that was what was going on with it. And then he also recommended for me to do some like stretching exercises and stuff like that. And he's like, Peter, I'm not a back doctor. He was like, so, he's like, you need to probably go talk to somebody. So I'm gonna see, like, <laughs> I'm such a procrastinator. We'll wait and see a couple days. If it's still hurting, then I'll go see somebody. Alex swears by his chiropractor, but like I'm terrified to go to a chiropractor. I don't know why. 
but I wouldn't go to a chiropractor until I had gone to like a specialist first, you know? Um, but there are moments where I feel like it feels better. Like late last night and late, like before I went to bed last night and before I went to bed the night before, like I felt like it was kind of feeling a little bit better. My hair is like literally a bird's nest. <laughs> Um, anyway, I had this thing happen where I was at the pool today, which was packed, by the way. I mean, it wasn't packed. It can't ever get packed, really. And, but there were like, so they have it sectioned off. So there's like, like five or six sections around the pool. Well, they were all taken today. But like some of the sections like where I was sitting, like there's only like one or two people that you know. So anyway. Oh. I was sitting in the pool and I was talking to these two women. <laughs> Who literally like this cracked me up. Very nice neighborhood, you know, <laughs> like older neighborhood. And these two women that I guess live side by side, they were probably, I would say, oh, they told me, they said that they were like 64, 64, 64 and 65, I think. And they had brought like a bottle of tequila and they were like making margaritas in water bottles like this. Like they would like put like crushed ice in here and then they would put like tequila and they were making margaritas and like drinking them in these water bottles. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh. So anyway, that cracked me up. Um, but it was really nice. I mean, I got a lot of sun today. Can you see? I don't know if you can see it all. But it was really nice in Indianapolis today. I mean, it was like no clouds in the sky. And it, my back felt so much better just being in the pool. So anyway, I... Um, was talking to them and they were like you know like people always ask in the pool like how long have you lived here and you know so I was like telling them I was like well my mom moved in in 94 but I moved in in 08 and they're like oh and you know, it's like my mom passed away and they're like I'm sorry and this woman was telling me that she'd like grown up right around the neighborhood and that her parents had passed away and she'd finally sold their house and then she had moved in there she actually lived in two condos um, in that neighborhood, she like lived in one and then moved to another one. Um, Cause like in our neighborhood, there's like two and three, there's like five bedroom condos in our neighborhood that are like houses that are literally like huge houses. Those are like on the other side of the, um, so our neighborhood is like an eight and there's two lakes and then there's condos all around like that. Does that make sense? Um, it's like a really small neighborhood. It's impossible to get in there though because like when a condo goes up for sale, like everybody knows it and then they want to get their friends in there and so because it's mostly older people and so they'll tell their friends and then their friends like will buy the house like or the condo like literally like the next day. Like the day that it's listed is like they sell it that day. That's how quick houses go in our neighborhood. Which I guess is nice but um... Like, somebody told me at the pool that, like, the property value is really good in our neighborhood because condos go so quick. So, like, whatever listing price is that people, like, typically sell for, like, listing price. Um, so, anyway, and then a lot of them need a lot of renovations, too. Ours needs, you know, quite a few renovations. But, um, so I was talking to these women... By the way, I already decided since I'm only going to do like a half an hour that I'm probably not going to do my outro today. <laughs> but um, I was talking to these women. That's a weird a post office truck or USPS truck. Didn't look like the mail trucks. And so like I was like, how do you guys know? And they're like, just one woman was like, well, she was like, tell me how they knew each other. And they had like grown up going to like Catholic schools in Indianapolis. 
And I was like, really? And she was like, oh yeah, she was like, I, this one woman was like, I went to Ladywood. Ladywood doesn't exist in Indianapolis anymore. But a lot of what happened was like back in the day, okay, like Ladywood, and I don't know what the boys' school was. I think like, I think they're both now like Ladywood, Maybe it was just Ladywood camp. I don't know. But Ladywood was a girls' Catholic school back in the day. High school. Maybe junior high, elementary, too. I don't know. But, um... So, I was like... Because, like, back in the day... Like, now we have, like, Park Tudor, which is, like, probably the best private school in Indianapolis. It's, like, this gated area. There's, like, an apple orchard there. I mean, it literally looks like something you'd see in Connecticut. It's gorgeous. And, like, my mom wanted me to go there. And my dad was like, no kid but no kid of mine's going to a private school. He was like... My mom... My dad was real against private schools. He was like, we went to public schools and that was fine for us. Peter doesn't need to go to a public or private school. My mom really wanted me to go to a private school. I don't know that it would have made any difference, but anyway, um, but back in the day when my mom was growing up, it was Park and Tudor, like, it was two separate schools, like, I think Park was for boys and Tudor was for girls, and that's how it used to be, like, back in the day, like, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, it was like a lot of these schools were separate, you know, they weren't co-ed. Well, Ladywood was an all-girls Catholic school. Well, Ladywood was small in Indianapolis, so usually when you're talking to somebody and they're like, oh, I went to Ladywood, like, if you say to them, oh, did you know Judy Smith, they're like, oh, yeah, Judy Smith was, like, three years behind me, but I knew her sisters. Her sisters were, like, in my grade, right? Well, I had a friend of mine that I used to work with, and, um, when I worked in treatment, like, I worked with her probably, like, my first five or seven years and she and I were super, super, super close. Like, went out to dinner. I would say she was a mentor of mine. Um, definitely. She was, she had gotten her, she had a master's degree in psychiatric nursing. And then she went and got her master's degree in social work. Which, like, the, that combination together is like, that's pretty, like, that's a lot of experience in academia. And then she took that and she ended up leaving where I worked with her, which was a treatment program, and she worked at Riley Children's Hospital. She worked on a team there, which is like a really hard place to get a job at. Like, you have to have like major experience and they have like teams that work with patients. So like, a team, um, like, a patient's team might have, like, a doctor, you know, um, this, that, and then, like, a psych nurse or whatever. And she was just, I mean, she had both of those degrees. So, it really put her in, like, you know, whatever. She just was fantastic and very educated and just a really cool woman to talk to, you know. Just really cool to talk to. And not only that, she just was, like... I don't know. She just was like, we would talk about books and art, and she just was like, just, you know, she had gone to IU Bloomington, and she just was kind of hippie-ish a little bit, and I just loved her. I adored her. And I think when I first started there, too, she was like one of the first people, like, she's like one of the only people that I worked with that I, like, really connected with. And, um, you know, she always had my back, and she'd always say to me things like, you know, she just was really encouraging to me. And so anyway, I was in the pool, and I was like, but I haven't talked to her in years. I mean, it's literally been years and years and years since I talked to her. She ended up getting married, and then um, having some kids, and I think she retired. Um, but, like, I haven't talked to her in a long time. I mean, it's, it's probably been 15 plus 20 years since I've talked to her. Not 20 years, 15 years since I've talked to her. 
so I was in the pool and I was talking to this woman that and she was like oh I went to Ladywood and I was like oh you did and she's like yeah and I said I wonder if you would have known a friend of mine that went to Ladywood and she's like well what was your friend's name and I told her and she goes oh and I said whatever happened to her she, I said I haven't talked to her in years I said I, I need to call her I would love to get together with her and like go have coffee or something I feel like this happens to me all the time. I was telling Tanya tonight, I said, I'm really tired of this happening, you know? And she looked at me and she said, sweetie, I'm sorry to tell you this. She said, but your friend passed away about five years ago. And I was like, what? And she said, yeah, they don't even really know what happened. She was just like sitting in, a, she wasn't even that old. She was like probably 10 years older than me. She was like, she was sitting in a chair and she just like passed away. I was like, are you kidding me? She was like, no. And I feel like all the time, I find out about people that have passed away that like I didn't even know. Like I was texting my cousin today about, did I talk about this on here? That I saw that a friend of mine had like, not a friend of mine, a friend of Caroline's, like one of her best friends from high school, like had passed away. I think I talked about this because I was talking about Facebook. This friend of hers that had MS, she had passed away. And I texted Caroline tonight. And I was like, um, so sad about so and so. Like, I didn't know. And she texted me back and she was like, I thought I told you about that. And I was like, no. And she was like, yeah, it was really sad. And she was texting me about it being like a like a virtual funeral, which a lot of people are telling me that about and whatever. And um, I don't know, like I got I was telling Alex at dinner and I just like lost it at dinner. I was like I feel like constantly I'm hearing like oh, so-and-so passed away, or so-and-so passed away, and I'm like, and but it wasn't like a week ago. It was like, I looked it up. I looked the obituary up. It was in September of 2016. She passed away four years ago, and I had no clue. You know? And I was like telling Alex that tonight, and he goes, well, he goes, I think it's a good lesson to like stay in contact with people, you know? And I can't believe this battery is like almost dying. <laughs> if I don't make it the full 30 minutes, why well, do you have another battery with me? So, but Alex was like, I think, you know, that it's a good lesson to like stay in touch with people and, um, you know, make sure that you call them and stuff. But like, I think work situations are so interesting like that because I was just like looking over there and it's so pretty over there. All the fields and stuff. Can you guys see? I don't know if you can see. But then it goes back into those woods over there and there's like this long creek that runs back over there. Um it's hard, you know? It's like, and it's not like you lose contact with people because you just, like, they're not nice people and you stop talking to them. It's like, people start dating other people, you know? Like, they start, especially, like, I think in work environments when, like, you guys all, like, start young. Like, we all started young together, you know? And then... I think, you know, at the time that I started there, we all were dating people. But then, like, all my girlfriends that I worked with, that we would, like, either talk on the phones in the evening, talk on the phone in the evening, or we would, you know, go out and get something to eat, or, you know what I mean? Like, in the evenings, that's what we would do some of those things. Nothing, anything wild. A couple times, you know, like, when I first started there, we would go out and stuff like that, but, like, not very often. 
but I can remember, you know, like, like, when I was working there, other than my friends in sobriety, like, they were my closest friends, because those were people that I was seeing every day, you know, and then, um, well, that's not true, like, my first year there, my first year or two, when I was just a tech, um, I guess, like, my first year, there was this other girl that I, there was this girl that I worked with that was, like, sober. Well, I worked with a lot of people that were sober my first year there, because the facility changed a lot over the years. Um, and it wasn't so many sober people, but when I first started working in this treatment facility, I'd say about 85% of the people that worked there were sober. She and I would, like, after work, because we would work till, like, 11 or 12, um, I worked either 3 to 11 or 4 to 12 when I started on my work second shift. And afterwards, like, she and I, she would come back to my, like, apartment, and she and I and my boyfriend would go to the pool in the summer a lot. Um, and, like, with my roommate, too. And then we would get, like, food and watch a movie or something. And, um, she actually sponsors... Uh, my friend that I used to work with, that's so funny, I never thought of like the six degrees of separation, but she sponsors, um, or I think, I think maybe not anymore, she used to sponsor my friend that um, I saw at my friend Aaron's party that like one time. Anyway that I used to work with. Because when I worked, you know, in treatment, there was, like, so many people that were in sobriety as well. That was kind of, like, a big thing, you know? But anyway, um, but then over time, what would happen is, you know, people get engaged, people get married, people have kids. Then all of a sudden, it's, you know, they're going out of town to visit their in-laws, and it's, you know gotta get, you know, go to church on Sunday, and soccer games on Saturdays, and it's like, that stuff ends over time, right? And I think especially, like, this is gonna sound crazy, but I think for gay men, it's kind of tough sometimes. Uh, I'm sure maybe the same for, I'm not just saying gay men, but like, lesbians, whatever, I don't know, maybe it's different for us, like, because back then, back then, I would say, more now, we're seeing a lot of, like, LGBTQIA plus couples have kids and settle down. But back then, you know, even if you were 35, a weekend looked like, what cute shirt are you gonna wear and let's go out to the bars? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what it looked like back then. So, 35 looked the same as 25, a lot. It really did, you know? And so when your girlfriends all of a sudden were like, settling down and getting houses and getting married. I sprayed on Creed earlier, and I can smell it on the shirt. It smells so good. Um, but when your girlfriends are settling down, and they're getting houses, and they're having kids, and getting married, and stuff like that, then it's like, you know, and you're not. It's like those two worlds don't really fit together. So it's hard. Um, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Anyway, I don't know, it just makes me sad. It makes me sad. She's such a wonderful person. She was like one of those like, look at those pretty flowers over there on the patio of that apartment. Um, she was like one of those people that like literally would just like do anything for you. She was so giving, you know? I need to be more like that. This guy looks like cotton candy this morning. Anyway, she will be missed. I guess that's like getting older. Whenever I talk to Susie, Susie's always like, where am I at on time? almost at 30 minutes. I'm like, should I change my battery? I'm sure it's going to start flashing soon. I'm going to get off here anyway. 
in a couple minutes. So when it starts flashing, I'll just like get off that, I guess, if not sooner. Hold on, I'm gonna stop this so I can don't go over. It's so pretty. I wanna show you guys this when I drive by here. Do you see this? It's like, there's like mist in the field. Look at this, how pretty it is. Look at that. This is where I vlog every night, but you don't know because I'm in the dark. <laughs> Fox Hollow Farms is right over, it's like over there kind of. That's so scary, oh my God. Anyway. Um, yeah, no, it's just sad. But like when I talk to Susie, Susie's like, my mom's friend Susie, she's like, I always try to say that because I'm like, there are people that just started watching my vlog and they're like, we don't know who Susie is. But I like assume that the majority of you have been like watching for years, you know? But like whenever I talk to Susie, Susie's like, I feel like everybody that I, I know has passed away. And I'm like, seriously? She's like, oh yeah, it sucks getting older. And um, my dad's kind of the same way. Like he'll say stuff to me like, I'll ask him about people. And he'll be like, oh Pete, she died. I'm like, what? And he'll be like, she died. And I'll be like, oh my God, when? Six years ago. I'm like, you didn't even tell me. He goes, well, okay. I mean, I don't remember to tell you about everybody that passed away. But then he'll say, yeah, he's like, it's weird. It's like everybody that I knew from my youth is like gone. It is weird. Especially when it starts becoming contemporaries of yours, you know? I think that's when, and I'm not old by any means and I know that. Like I joke about being the old man of YouTube and stuff like that, but I am the old man of YouTube. I mean like, let's just be for real. The average age of YouTube is like 25. Even these YouTubers that are like 30 are like aging out at this point. Y'all are old, you better figure out a retirement plan because you're 30. Um, but um, I was like looking up who like, like beauty influencers are the other day. I was like their ages. Um, and I was surprised, like, uh, Jacqueline Hill just turned 30. Manny is 29, he'll be 30, like, next year. Uh, Laura Lee has to be close to his age, because they're, like, best friends. Jeffree Star's 34. Like, Trisha Paytas is, like, 32, I think. Shane Dawson's, like, 31 or 32. Tyler Oakley's, like... 31 or 32. Like, these people that have been on YouTube for, like, 10 years, like, they're now, like, in their 30s, you know? Which, to some degree, is kind of crazy to me because, like, I look at where I was at that age, like, and where they are, and it's, like, just, like, I can't kind of, like, connect. You know what I mean? But now I feel like I've taken 10 steps back because, like, well, now I'm... I'm a YouTuber of the world, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't really often think of myself as old on YouTube. You know, I joke about it, and I'll talk about it. And, and like, in concept and theory, someone is just, like, standing out here in the corner. I mean, it's, like, kind of, like, the day now. It's 6.30. <laughs> Hi. Um, but... The sky is so pretty. It is like pink and blue. But you know, like in concept and in theory, like I'll talk about it. Like, um, you know, like I'm the old man of YouTube and I'll, you know, whatever. But in all actuality, I am. Like I'm one of the older people on YouTube. Um, And if I think about it, like, I don't know who I would compare myself to, like, other drama channels, but, like, the majority of the other drama channels that that I'm aware of are, like, the, the people that I've interacted with in the past are, like, in, the thir in their 30s. So, like, they're not that much younger than me in reality. Like, my husband's 36, you know what I mean? Just 36. So, like, for me, it's, like, there's not, like it doesn't seem like that big of an age gap. Now, 
the drama channels, the new ones that are up and coming are like 19, 20, 21. Now that does feel like like that like a huge difference to me. Um, but like I don't really compare what I do to them because it's so completely different. Do you know what I mean? Um, I just see what I do, and that's just. And the other thing is like. That's just on one channel, like the drama channel. Like on my review channel, like I don't really feel like in comparison to anybody else, they're younger than or they're older. And the reality is a lot of review channels are older. Um, you know, my Peterisms channel, I don't even know what to compare that to. And then, you know, like my booktube channel, well, there are booktubers all ages. There's a lot of booktubers that are my age and a lot older. Um, And then, you know, just vloggers, just whatever. So, like, I just feel myself as, like, doing what I love. And I don't really think much about the age. Like, I really... Like, while I'm doing it, like, while I'm filming and I'm interacting with, like, you guys and, like, the comments or whatever. You know, like, or Twitter. Like, I don't think of, like, my age. as like, oh, my God, I'm so old. You know, like, I don't think of it that way. But when I... Like, but when I am sitting there thinking about, like... Like, can I do this 10 years from now? Things like that. You know, like, how many 58-year-olds are there that are, like, maintaining, like, you know, a consistent upload schedule on YouTube? You know what I mean? Like, but then I think to myself, well, hell, you weren't doing this 10 years ago anyway, so what think, makes you think that you're going to still be around here in 10 years? I mean, you might be doing something completely different. You know, you might have won the Powerball by then. Um, or you might be writing books full-time. Or you might have gotten picked up and be hosting your own talk show or you know what I mean like who knows or I might be on YouTube and I might be doing 10 other things on YouTube because who I am on YouTube has constantly changed in the four years that I've been on here like it is like consistently changed I've added things I've taken things away I you know whatever I've more added things than anything and I'm getting ready to start my sixth channel so um I'm very excited about that. But, like, I'm not rushing into it either. I'm just kind of, like... I'm really, like, not even thinking it out or mapping it or outlining it. I'm just kind of, like, letting it sit there in my head. And I kind of, like... You know, from time to time while I'm driving around throughout the day or doing chores or whatever, I'll think about it and, like, an idea and I'll jot it down or whatever in my notes. But, like, I... Like, I'm not, like, putting a whole lot of thought into it just yet. I know what I want it to be. And, um, I know how I want to do it. And I already know it's going to be laughed at. This is gorgeous. This is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, did you guys see, like, the kind of, like, mist coming off the ground? Um... I already know how I'm going to do it if I do it. But I'm not in a hurry or a rush. So we'll see. I think maybe also, you know, like because I'm not like in a conventional working environment, I think to myself of the differences, not the similarities, if that makes sense. Like, you know, I'm not in a conventional work environment where there are other people that are like my age regularly and things like that, you know, or that I'm going into work and seeing other people, now the battery's dying, are my age. So I think that because of that, um, you know, where people would be like, oh, I've still got 20 years until I'm retiring or whatever. You know, like, my dad would never have in a million years thought of himself as retiring at 48. He just never would have. You know, hell, he didn't even retire until he was almost 80. So what, you know, 30 years later, he retired? But I think, like, because I'm at home and I work by myself and I love the, the life that I have, like I always say, I have a life beyond my wildest dreams, but because of that, 
I think I don't interact with a lot of people that are my age that have similar lives to me. So it's like, like even my close friends that are my same age, like when we see each other, go out to eat or talk or whatever, it's like their life looks so completely different than mine. So there's no comparison study to it. There's a cute little barn out here full of horses and stuff. <gasps> little goats and whatever. Aww. Um, but there's like no comparison. It's so completely different, right? So it's like, okay, well this is my life and this is your life and we're both the same age, but like they're very dis different, you know? I don't know, and I like that, it's fun, but just makes me appreciate my life more and what I've made my life into and just that my life matches me and I'm very, I feel very blessed for my life. I love my life and um, yeah. All right, you guys, I'm gonna get off here now, and um, I actually went, you got 10 minutes longer. <laughs> I hope it doesn't die while I'm trying to sign off here. So I'm not gonna do my long exit today. I'm just gonna say thank you guys for watching. Um, I know people, I've gotten a lot of questions lately, like you get up in the middle of the night to, just to vlog. Yes, because I don't really have a whole lot of other time to do it. And I love this channel, and I love you guys, and it means the world to me. And so, I, that's, I'm up late at night. I like to listen to audiobooks, and that's when I do it. And I just like to drive around and talk. It's very calming for me. And I want to thank you guys yet again for that. I love you so much. Thank you um, for giving me this opportunity to have this channel. I love this channel. It's... It's so relaxing and calming and I don't know. It's like you guys are all friends. I just sit down and talk to you. So um, I love you guys. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And um, be too much today and make the most of your day. And I promise tomorrow a longer outro. I love you and I will see you then. Bye. Love ya.